Okay. Good morning and happy Friday. So, elephant in the room. It's been a while since we have really vlogged. I am going to give you a few updates that have been occurring over the past couple weeks and I'm going to kind of insert footage here and there, kind of giving a little bit more background to the information that I am giving. Um, it'll make sense in just a second. So over the past couple of weeks, there have definitely been a few um, changes. First update, let's talk about the car. If you are new to this channel and you're like, what's going on with the car? I will link an entire playlist right up here. Update with the car is that the sensor was definitely not the problem because the day after we took it home, we were gonna go out to dinner with a couple of our friends. We were gonna take the ST because we thought it was fixed. We turn the car on and the check engine light comes on. Um, which is not supposed to happen if you literally got it back the day before and it was supposed to be fixed. We end up taking the ST back to the mechanic to be like, yo, it's still not fixed, unfortunately. And they were like, dang, like I thought that was the problem. Update. Again. It's broken again. We uh, went out last night with some of our friends, got into the ST and I started it up. The warning came up again. It said engine fault, service engine now or whatever. The little orange eye illuminated on my dash. No check engine light though, whatever reason shut it off and got into our good old trusty Kia that works every time. Don't say oh, anything, yeah. you're probably gonna jinx. Oh yeah. When we came home last night, after going out with our friends, oh, yeah. we turned it on again and it was fine again. Yeah, it was fine. So it still sounds like it's an electrical problem, except they just switched the sensor out. Yeah. And apparently that wasn't the issue it, because it's still doing yeah, it. Yeah, it made it a day. One day. I made it one day. Just one day. Yeah. The ST is still being extremely temperamental, but that isn't the only update with the ST because we've actually kind of switched gears a little bit. Previously, we were pretty set on getting either a Kia Sorento or a Kia Sportage once we figure out what to do with this car. Things have changed a little bit and our priorities have shifted a little bit and now we're actually looking at a Tacoma. Gonna be completely honest, I was not psyched about this. Right when the problem started popping up with the ST, so like back in November when we were going to Vlogger Fair, I was like, okay, we're definitely getting a new car. The one condition I have with the new car is that I don't want it to be a truck. I don't, I don't like trucks. I mean, no offense to anybody who has a truck, I just don't like them, like I, I really don't. And so we were like, okay, the Kias look good. At that time we were kind of, it was like, we were being almost pushed in that direction because we saw Kias everywhere. The Kia that we have right now has been fantastic. We were just really excited to get like a Sorento or a Sportage, but um, Blake wasn't as on board with it as I kind of thought he was. I, I think we were kind of on different pages a little bit. You know, that happens. We just needed to kind of communicate a little bit better. And he told me that he was really wanting to get a truck. And I was not excited about this because that was the one condition I had. Like it could be literally any other car. I just didn't want a truck. But when it came down to it, the car that we are getting, that we were going to end up getting regardless of whatever car we ended up getting, it was going to basically be his. His commute is much longer than mine. I don't have to leave the house every single day for work. And for something that was going to be his car, I wanted it to be something that he was gonna be excited about. And we kind of talked it over and there were a lot of benefits of getting a truck that started to reveal themselves. Like I mentioned about the Sorento or the Sportage, something that I really want to do with whatever car we get next is I wanna go camping. I want it to be a fun car to take on road trips and everything like that. Something that's really cool about the Tacoma, the one that he's looking at, is that it's able to kind of go off-roading. So not only can you kind of go camping with it, but you can kind of take it literally anywhere for the most part. So we've kind of shifted gears a little bit and that's kind of more the direction that we're going in at the moment. That being said, it is still not something that is happening right away because we still have to deal with the ST first. So the deal with the ST is that we are going to be trading it in when we get the new car. As for when that's actually happening, we're not completely sure yet. Blake has a very specific model of truck in mind that he wants when it comes to the Tacoma and we have to wait for them to actually <laughs> be in stock and and uh, wait for that to actually happen. And then we trade it in and then hopefully 
we just don't ever have to think about it again. <laughs> so that is kind of a bigger thing that has been happening over the past couple weeks is that we've shifted gears when it comes to what car we're probably gonna get and the ST is still broken, yay. <laughs> Another thing that has happened recently over the past couple weeks is that one of my coworkers has actually um, decided to move on from our company, which is good for her. She wanted to do different um, things, but that means that I have kind of acquired all of her responsibilities and job duties, as well as all of my job responsibilities. So I've been working a lot. I mean, you guys have obviously noticed that there has not been a lot of vlogs lately. Okay, kitty. <laughs> Partially that is because I have just been working more and I have to do the job that pays the bills above YouTube sometimes and that's just how it goes. So that's another thing that has been going on lately. I've just been working a lot more. Something exciting that has happened recently is I actually got a new lens for my nicer camera, which is what I'm filming on right now. I bought a new lens and you want to know something funny. I paid for the one day shipping because it was like 10 extra dollars and I was like really excited about it. I was supposed to get it today and this morning I heard the doorbell ring at 7.30 in the morning, but I was still in bed. Like we were just waking up for the day. And so I just was like, Meh, I'm not even gonna bother answering the door. Cause I didn't know what it was. I thought it was like a neighbor being like, hey, I'm going to like trim your hedges or something like that because that happens occasionally too. <laughs> but then we got a notification on our phones, both me and Blake from Amazon that was like, hey, attempted delivery of your lens happened this morning. And it was like, I've never had something delivered at 7.30 in the morning before. Like, I think anything after eight o'clock in the morning is probably like m more okay or in the realm of okay. But something about 7.30 still seems a little bit on the early side for ringing doorbells. So I don't know, let me know what you think. Let me, have you ever had something delivered at 7.30 in the morning? That seems, to me that seems early, but maybe, maybe, maybe that's not early. Oh. <laughs> My gosh, so I just got back from my run <laughs> and I, I desperately needed to do laundry because I was I was so sweaty. I had, it's kind of gross, but I had like worked out in those clothes like three times in a row. So they were like really nasty, like above average nastiness, right? I literally just start stripping in the living room. Like I just start taking off my clothes cause I'm gonna go throw them in the laundry <laughs> and the doorbell rings. I was butt naked in the middle of the living room and the doorbell rings. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this them trying to deliver the lens again? There's no way I'm missing it again. I didn't have anything clean or even accessible to like put on. And so I ran upstairs and I threw on my robe. I come down here and I look in the peephole and there's like nobody there. I open the door and they left the lens there just on the doorstep. I don't know why they didn't do that earlier because it wasn't, it didn't require like a signature or anything. And so I was like, so here are the goodies that I got in the mail today. First of all, I got a Gorillapod tripod. I've actually wanted for kind of a while and especially with like the videos that I want to start making more on my second channel, my like kind of like health channel. I want to be able to like record my workouts a little bit more in depth and I don't want to have to have Blake's help to film them. Um, so, but like when I go to the gym and stuff, sometimes there's just nowhere I can set the camera. Like there just isn't. So, um, I needed something like this. And this I thought would just come in handy just to have it anyway. And this is the lens. <gasps> Ooh, it's not even out of the box yet. But it's a 28 millimeter F2, which is the equivalent of a 35 millimeter on a full frame camera, which is what, uh, the a7s is i figured the best way that we would get to know the lens a little bit more and just kind of test it out would be to drive literally to the edge of town like complete edge of town las vegas is a really funny city in the way that it's literally in the middle of nowhere like the entire city if you look at it on a map it's in the middle of the desert in the middle of nowhere and so what ends up happening is once you leave the city there's nothing so for example, here's a road. Oh, here's a turn lane. Just kidding. The road completely stops right here. You know what I mean? Like it just ends. This is the end of a road. You cannot go any further. Um, and what is further is uh, something that just hasn't been developed yet. So I thought this would be a really great spot, especially because we just got a fresh coat of snow on the mountains. And um, we're going to, I'm going to switch out 
to the new lens really quick. I, I can't see myself because the Sony a7S doesn't have a flip out screen. Um, I do know that this lens is going to be significantly shakier, like the camera will appear shakier than it does on the other camera. But like I said, this isn't really what I'm planning on becoming a vlog camera. This is just more of like a pretty shots kind of camera. So I got my phone, I got the keys, I'm going to lock up my purse and we are going to go out and check out the beautiful outdoors. As for updates for Blake, he has recently enrolled in school, so he's actually working toward his bachelor's degree at the moment, which is really exciting. He's enrolled in his very first class. He's excited and I'm I'm so proud of him for actually like going to school. I'm just really excited for him and proud of him. He's also finished up, I think, his first volume of CDCs and he actually recently received his second volume or or he just finished up his second volume. I'm not sure. He's like making his way through doing CDCs as well, which is basically knowledge and courses that you have to take for your job in the Air Force. So that's what he's also been working on. And he's also just gotten dates for ALS, which is Airman Leadership School, which is the basically the classes that you have to take before you become an NCO in the Air Force. Before he sews on Staff Sergeant, you have to go to ALS. So he'll be doing that at the end of February, which means it's just going to be so busy. <laughs> I'm excited for him and it's just going to be, there's just been a lot of changes going on, I guess, recently more than anything else. And something that is kind of bittersweet that is going on right now is we, I say we, it might actually just be me, depending on Blake's work schedule, if he can actually take time off. I am actually going to be flying up to Washington to the Seattle area for probably about a week in February. So in just like a couple of days is February, which was kind of mind blowing all on its own because my grandfather, he has recently kind of moved into an assisted living home. If you guys don't know, my grandpa, he's 94 years old. I think he's going to be 95 this year and he's still, super independent. He's such an independent dude. So he's recently moved into this assisted living home and they're actually, he's actually looking to sell the home that he's basically lived in for ridiculous amounts of time, like maybe 40 or 50 years or something like that. So part of that process is my, my whole family, basically my mom, my brother, my dad, my aunts and uncles, they're all kind of helping clean out his house. And his house, I mean, I think anybody's grandparents' house would be full of so much incredibly valuable and special, like meaningful things. The process of going through those things and the process of actually helping clean out his house, that's actually something I really wanna be a part of. That house is just full of so many memories, even for me as a kid, like, there's just so much there. The other side of it is that I want to go up to Washington because I actually want to sit down and interview my grandfather. Just kind of talk about his life because he's lived an incredible life and I've never really gotten the full picture, if that makes sense. I've never, I've never understood his life from beginning to end and I want to have that knowledge and I want to record that. So those memories and those stories are preserved. My grandpa was born in the 20s. He lived through the Great Depression. He was in the Army Air Corps before the Air Force was even a thing. He was a cryptographer. He fought in World War II and was flown all over the world. He he just has so many stories to tell and I want I want those stories and those memories to be preserved forever if possible. There's also so many pictures that he ended up taking from his entire life that I want to scan and digitize home videos from forever ago that he happens to have. That kind of stuff is so important to me and so I'm going to be going up at some point in February to get all of that all taken care of. I'm actually really excited and looking forward to it so much but it is bittersweet because the house is just so important and so special and 
I don't want to see it go, but I know that it has to. So that's probably what we're going to be doing at some point in February. So those are kind of the biggest things that are going on right now. And that's actually where I'm going to end this vlog just because I know that it's getting lengthy because I have just talked so much. For today's question of the day, I actually want to know if you guys have any questions that you would want to ask somebody who is almost 100 years old. I have a list of like questions that I want to ask him. Um, everything from like, do you have any regrets? What is your advice for younger generations? Everything like that. But then kind of more specific things like, like what was the first car he owned and what was the first concert he remembers going to? I would love to know if you guys have any questions that you want me to ask him, leave them in the comments down below and I would love to ask from you those questions. And I think I'll definitely be sharing that footage and those his stories to you guys when I actually get the chance. So anyway, that's where I'm going to end today's vlog. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time. I also think we are finally going to be getting back on track this next coming week, so you actually have something to kind of look forward to. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you next time. Bye!